Happy New Year to all my subscribers and shipping container homes enthusiasts. Welcome to today's video. Today we are looking at rust and corrosion prevention on shipping containers. Rust and corrosion can have devastating effects on shipping containers and shipping container homes if not prevented. If you love shipping container homes or are exploring the possibilities of building your own, this video brings to you the top 12 causes and ways to prevent rust and corrosion on shipping container homes and buildings, starting with the causes. Stay tuned to find out how. Most 20 and 40 foot shipping containers are generally made of what is known as coating steel, also known as weathering steel. The word coating comes from a shortened blend of two properties of steel, corrosion resistance and tensile strength, combined to form the word coating. Cotton steel is strongly corrosion resistant, but it's not entirely rust proof. Subjected to an environment conducive for rusting, shipping containers develop rust. Cotton steel is designed to work best when it's used in a cyclic environment. This means the containers should be exposed to a constant cycle of both wet and dry environments. The enhanced corrosion resistance of shipping containers happens when a protective oxide film causes the surface to slow down corrosion. Welcome on board and enjoy the video. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, feel free to subscribe for our weekly videos on shipping container homes and shipping container homes reviews. Let's get started. First, we look at the types of rust that can occur on shipping containers. When any metal rusts, it slowly corrodes and eventually disintegrates. There are two main types of rust that can occur on shipping containers. The first type of rust is what we call structural rust. This is the type of rust that can negatively affect the structural integrity of a shipping container. Significant structural rust can render a container unusable. This type of rust must be avoided at all costs. It can have catastrophic impacts, especially on those people who intend to build multi-level shipping container structures. The second type of rust is what we call non-structural rust. This is basically the minimal surface level rust and is less of a concern. However, it can negatively affect the face value of your shipping container or shipping container home. So, what are the causes of rust and corrosion on shipping containers? For a shipping container to rust, they need to come into contact with both water and oxygen. When the containers come into contact with both oxygen and water, an oxidation reaction occurs. This reaction between the steel, water, and oxygen forms a brownish coating of hydrated ion-3 oxide, which we can visibly see as rust. The following are the main causes of rusting in shipping containers. Number one, moisture. While containers are designed to have limited places where water can collect, there are always places where water can pull and initiate the corrosion process. The most natural places to look for rust on a shipping container are the areas where there are higher chances of water pulling or dripping. Areas below the doors, areas on the roof, underneath the floor base 
and the top corners where the wall and the ceiling meet are the common culprit zones for moisture formation on shipping containers. The second cause of rusting and corrosion in shipping containers is climate. The reason the containers along the coastal regions rust more than inland shipping containers is because they have been exposed to marine environment which has high quantities of salt water spray. Other locations that are prone to high levels of rusting and corrosion of shipping containers includes areas with high rainfall, areas with high humidity, and areas with persistent fog and snowfalls. This does not mean you can't build a shipping container home in this location, but it means you will have to do additional protection to your shipping containers in order to inhibit further rusting. The third cause is condensation. Condensation is basically the collection of water droplets on the inside surface of shipping containers. When the container is warm, the atmosphere inside the container can become humid. When cool during the evening, it will form water droplets, usually on the coolest part of the container and especially on the ceiling. If not checked, condensation can cause formation of mold and rust inside a shipping container. Number four, dents and deformation. During the handling of containers, dents and damages may occur. If there are any significant dents in the container that have broken the painted surface, rust can start to form at these points, leading to rapid deterioration of the container. Be careful to avoid damaging the surface of your shipping containers during the handling process. Number five, and lastly, we look at cuttings and modifications. Shipping containers are well designed to avoid corrosion, water, and dirty traps. However, the structure can get compromised after you cut them, when you join them, when you stack them, or when you modify them in various ways, shapes, and forms. Check the containers at the modified areas, especially around the joints, or the metal on these areas to ensure that they are clean and free of corrosion. Having looked at the five or so main causes of shipping container rust, the next step will look at ways and means of preventing rust and corrosion in shipping containers. Repairing rusting containers can be very expensive and time consuming if not nipped in time. The following methods can be used to prevent or control widespread rusting on shipping containers. Number one, use a one trip container. One trip containers are used to ship a single cargo load and once they arrive at their destination, they are sold off. One trip containers are preferred because they have less or no blemish at all and they are cheaper than new containers. Using new containers would be the best alternative when building a shipping container, but these will negate the whole concept of affordability and sustainability. On the other hand, all containers would be the cheapest option. However, Buying an old container may be cheap, but it will cost you more to restore and maintain. Old containers come with challenges of dampness, corrosion, deformed corners, dented walls, and buckled roof panels. To avoid all these problems, it is advisable to buy a one-trip container whenever possible. Number two, proper inspection. When buying a used container, it is advisable to carefully inspect second-hand containers for corrosion issues prior to
to patches. The most likely places to have corrosion issues are the places that people tend not to look at, specifically underneath the floor subassembly where the container has been in regular contact with moisture from the ground. In addition, during the inspection, pay close attention to the roof of your shipping containers. Any dents on the roof will hold water which will accelerate the process of rust and can eat away at your container's roof. Furthermore, check for any signs of rust anywhere else where water may be collected or trapped. Number three, elevate the containers. If containers are laid on the ground, the bottom is likely to rust due to the ground moisture. A simple way to avoid this would be to elevate the containers of the ground. In addition to elevating the containers away from moisture, the elevated position allows you to inspect the underside of your shipping containers with ease. The use of an elevated foundation on shipping containers allows for airflow underneath, which will help to regulate temperature inside the containers and hence prevent condensation, which may cause formation of mold and rust. If you are building a shipping container home, use an appropriate foundation. You are encouraged to watch our previous video on the best five foundation types used in shipping container homes and buildings for more understanding. Number four, sandblast and treat the rusted areas. Many second-hand and old shipping containers are prone to localized rust. Localized rust is that type of rust that is not widespread but specific to certain areas on the surface of shipping containers. The only certain solution for eliminating rust in a localized spot on a shipping container is by sandblasting the surface down to bare metal then painting it with a good two-part paint. Once the surface has been ground down to the bare metal, paint it over with a primer first and then secondly give it a top coat paint. If cost is not an issue, containers for building homes can be given several coats of paint to preserve and protect the containers from other environmental factors. For example, the Graceville Container House in Brisbane, Australia was painted internally with three layers of wash and wear white dulux to keep the color scheme consistent throughout the house. Externally, eight layers of dulux infracool were used. The infracool paint was used to help block UV rays and reflect some of the heat away. Number five, lubricate the doors. If you are using the original cargo doors on your containers, it is advisable to take good care of them. Remove all the dirt, grit, and rust from the door hinges and locking bars using lubricating spray and a good quality grease. Lubricate the door hinges and locking bars to ensure that they work correctly. Shipping containers are designed to completely operate in a sealed environment and use come again and utilize the rubber gasket type seals on the doors to avoid entry of moisture inside the container number six use zinc paint the science used in this method is called cathodic protection Basically, the zinc forms a sacrificial anode and is lost instead of the underlying steel container. For best results, the zinc paint should be greater than 90% dry zinc powder. This ensures electrical conductivity within the underlying steel. If sandblasting the entire container and giving it a fresh coat of paint is not feasible, then painting the containers with zinc paint sprayed on top of the rusty areas could be 
an alternative option. Number seven, proper insulation. The two best methods to prevent condensation in a shipping container home is proper insulation and adequate ventilation. The climate of the location where you are building will determine the type of insulation to use. Areas that experience extreme weather conditions are highly prone to condensation challenges. The use of insulation is also essential to preventing condensation, which can corrode the container and form rust and mold. If you are building in a cold climatic region, use closed cell spray foam insulation on the container walls and ceiling. Closed cell insulation provides an airtight seal and a good water barrier which is effective to prevent condensation. In tropical climate, extreme hot conditions may be of a concern. However, for shipping containers to weather in the expected fashion, corrosion resistant steel needs to undergo both wetting and drying cycles. The moisture activates the corrosion process, but in the drying, the oxide layer it creates obtains a non-porous state. In tropical climate, passive ventilation strategies are adequate to control condensation. Last but not least, the eighth strategy to use to control rust and corrosion on your shipping containers is to cover your containers. Shipping containers can be covered with an elevated corrugated steel or planted roof to protect the containers from extreme weather of rain, snowfall, and direct sunlight. A roof cover will prevent water from pulling on the roof of the containers, hence causing rust and corrosion. In addition, an extra elevated roof above the shipping containers allows for airflow, which helps to regulate the temperature inside the containers, hence preventing condensation, which may cause formation of mold and rust. So, did you find our analysis exhaustive and informative enough to help you on the maintenance of your shipping container home? If you have built your own shipping container home, let us know what strategies and cost-saving measures you have employed to prevent rust and corrosion in your shipping container house. If you feel we have left out anything, kindly let us know by posting in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it. Remember to subscribe to our channel for our weekly videos on shipping container homes and amazing design ideas. Thank you for your time and looking forward to an exciting year together. See you in the next video.